Can you draw the other curtains as well? Yeah. Uh, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the March meeting of the Western Morgan Archives Committee. Lovely to see everybody here and, uh, and also members who are appearing online. Um, just, just a reminder, because it is a hybrid meeting, if mobile phones can be switched off, and if you can clearly indicate uh, if and when you want to speak so that um, Gareth can pick up your your message. Thank you very much. Uh, Gareth, do we have any apologies for absence, please? Only from officers at the moment, Chair from Chris Saunders and Tracy McNuffty. Thank you very much. Are there any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests? Uh, there's one from me. It's a personal interest because I'm a member of Archive Service staff. Thank you, Andrew. That's noted. The next item uh, is the minutes of the last meeting, and that was held on the 15th of December. So first of all, may I have your approval that the minutes are accurate? So first of all, page one. Page, page two. Page three. And, and that's all. Um, do you prove that they are an accurate? Yeah, thank you very much. Are there any matters arising? Kim, is there anything you need to mention? I, I should mention that a store isn't on the isn't in my report this quarter. So if there are any questions around that, perhaps you could take them at this point or if there's any um update that anybody uh, wishes to give any questions or any matters arising from anybody just an update would be helpful chair yes. and, uh, i know we we're talking about a site meeting in the last meeting wondering whether any progress on that and when it's likely to be thank you um so the uh the uh, inf extra information that I have since the last quarter is that the, um, the building is due to open in May 2025. So that's the projected finish date and construction. If you've been past the building, you'll see that construction is ongoing, has it started and is ongoing at the moment. And it's mostly, uh, as I believe, in the demolition process. Um, uh, the Hours of opening have been uh, decided, which are 9 to 5.30 uh, and 10 till 4 on weekends. But obviously the archives can keep to its own uh, opening hours within. Uh, that's the, the overall building, so i.e. the front door would be unlocked to the public uh, between those hours, uh, 9 to 5.30, Monday to Friday and 10 till 4 on Saturday and Sunday. And on the weekend, it's mostly the central library that um, people would be accessing it for. Um, the search room, I discussed that at the last meeting about the relocation of the search room, which gives far more space. Um, if, if you were at the last meeting, you would have, um, we would have gone through that. Um, just trying to think whether there's anything else. Um, we've, uh, uh, undergoing training with regard to the um, conservation management and in fact the, uh, a large number of staff next week going on a training course which is helpfully titled how to move an archive so uh, I think it's almost designed with us in mind actually um, I don't think there's anything else that I can think offhand to to report on that obviously there will be um, future updates and I'm not sure about the on site visit because just at the moment during the demolition phase I would imagine that there's um, health and safety issues and that it would that would need to be um, finished before a site visit could be arranged but I can ask on your behalf to the project manager if that and try to, to work out a rough time scale in that. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. 
for committee members to know that, given that it's open May 2025, so that's approximately 14 months, isn't that? Yes. I imagine that there will be a stage coming up fairly soon where it will be in a, uh, the building will be in a state where that site visit can, can take and, and you can see yes. how the shape is taking within the, um, within the redesign of the building. I think I'd probably recommend that you go on two site visits because I think once demolition is finished it's going to just look like a shell and probably isn't going to give you very much of a picture of what it might although obviously that could be explained what it will look like but but uh, it's going to look not not look particularly attractive at that point once everything's been stripped out so uh, I'll, I'll I'll come back to the committee with projected dates for yeah for a site visit on the way back. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or observations? Yep. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now moving on to the report of our county archivist. Kim, over to you, please. Thank you, Cher. Can I just check that everybody joining online can hear me okay? Good. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, um, so the budget papers in March for the March meeting usually include the um, uh, budget report for the committee. Um, there were one or two issues uh, around the um, uh, the finer details of the report, which meant that it wasn't ready in time for the publication uh, um, uh, a, a week in advance of the meeting. So I'm afraid it was, wasn't able to attach it to the um uh to to the report papers i can however say that it is concluded and i can give you a verbal update uh now on the uh on the budget report as members will uh be aware it's not for the the committee to uh accept or otherwise the budget it's uh just a note note the budget so um Without further ado, I'll just go uh, run through the um, the key details of of the report. So um, the budget for total budget for 24-25 is expected to be three hundred and thirty two thousand two hundred and fifty, uh, which is a, a very small increase on last year's budget, uh, which is um, was three three zero seven fifty. And the main reason that the um, uh, uh, the budget hasn't increased, total budget hasn't increased that much, is because we're drawing down more from, from reserves. Um, if I can go off the report just to explain the background of that, because I'm, I'm sure that raises a few questions, but there are a, um, uh, a number of things that we've had to uh, modify in this budget, whereas most, most years it just uh, same um uh same issues come up again and again but as members i'm sure are aware this is my uh last meeting and i'll be retiring in june um the one of the key things that we uh needed to do was to um a recruit a successor but also to restore the post to full time um i'm not sure whether all members would be aware, but I'm only part time as county archivist because particularly the Swansea members will uh, be aware that I'm also the council's data protection officer, which is a separate role. And um, in order to um, make the post full time, some adjustments have been made and this has been subject to a delegated powers report, which has gone through and um, the post the new uh, county archivist will be a full time appointment. Um, there's also a pressure on the budget from digital preservation. Um, now, I talked about digital preservation in previous meetings and it's also on the agenda here, but the um, uh, there will be a, a consortium uh, created uh, across Wales for archive services to uh, create a trusted digital repository for digital and digitized material. 
and that will be operative probably from July. And that involves a um, uh, uh, an investment in in that. And I've set aside uh, well in the in the budget there is twelve twelve thousand per annum towards our our contribution to the uh, consortium, which although it might seem quite a large sum, is actually probably about half what we might have had to pay had we just been acting on our own. Um, so um, we're working alongside um, uh, seven other archive services across Wales, and that will be covered in in the main body of my report. But those are the two budget pre pressures of um, uh, uh, on on the budget. Um, in order to um, help fund that, uh, we are proposing to. Uh, um, create full cost recovery for the trainee post. And so um, the the amount that is drawn down from reserves every year will increase to reflect the actual cost of the trainee post. Um, it's something that I hadn't really noticed, and I don't think anybody else had noticed, was that the, the amount drawn down for the trainee post on an annual basis had fallen well behind what it actually costs to um, fund the trainee post. I probably hadn't changed for upwards of 10 to 15 years, I would have thought. So the amount is being increased from 19.4 to 32.5, which is an increase of 13.1k to reflect the actual cost of employing the trainee for the year. Um, so um, that is the, um, um, the outline of the uh, the budget, which can be circulated after the meeting um, to to members. Um, before I go on to the question of reserves, uh, are there any questions relating to the revenue budget for 2425? Um, the reserves, um, the estimated balance uh, we have uh, estimated balance on, on 31st of March for the Archives Document Fund will be just under 21,000. That's a static amount, so no money is putting it, put into that fund. Um, the training reserve is estimated to be at £261,215, so just over a quarter of a million in the training reserve. So. Um, Although we're increasing the amount we're taking from the reserves going forward, the reserves are reasonably quite um, quite full at the moment. Um, that concludes my outline of the uh, the budget report. Uh, are there any questions on on the budget report? Questions. Oh. Can, 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 can I uh, <coughs> just to refresh my memory? The training reserve that funds the the trainee post. Does it, it? it does only for that. Yes, it's only for that. Yes. And uh, and and the other reserve, the twenty one k. What does that fund? So that is if we had to buy uh, uh, um, archive okay. collections. Yes. Um, and and we've utilised that in the past to buy some. Yes, not for food. some time. So uh, the last time we used it, because it used to have about um, 40k in, we um, put money towards the purchase of the Neath Abbey Ironworks collection. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but that is probably, I'm just trying to think, it's about 15 to 16 years ago that we, we bought that collection, probably sometime. Uh, around about 2000, early 2010s that yeah. we bought it. So yes. yeah. thankfully, touch wood, we don't need to shell out on, on purchasing archive collections very often. No, but it's good to have that in reserves. Yes, just in yes. we need to act. Yes, yeah. And it's also worth noting that that would essentially be match funding to make applications to other funds. So mm -hmm. where, if we look at the um, the Fabianos collection, we were more than 50% match funded by the um, Friends of the National Libraries and um, the, a fund called PRISM, which was a fund for the preservation of industrial and 
scientific material, and we were guided towards those by the you know, uh, Welsh Government to uh, to help us uh, try to find funding. So uh, yeah, um, we 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 only paid a proportion of the price of that collection. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, right, th thank you very much for that budget update, Kevin. We look forward to to seeing yes. the, the figures and when they're published. And I, I assume the committee notes the contents of the report <laughs> as outlined in the meeting. <laughs> um, and uh, look forward to uh, um, receiving in greater detail in the written written yeah. form later. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. Shall I move on to yeah, my please. Yeah. So I'm um, moving on to my own report. Um, paragraph one, section one is about use of the service. The figures are there, as you can see, they're going up, but still quite small um, compared to pre pandemic figures, uh, but they are going in the right direction, I'm pleased to say. I'm very pleased to report that we were able to um, start the um, service, the Thursday service in Neath during the quarter. I think I can't remember the exact date we we started. Uh, uh, I'm sure it was during the reporting quarter. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> during the last quarter. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, it was I mean, it was in between December and February. Anyway, so the figures have gone up um, uh, quite substantially in the as you'll see from um, from the stats there. Um, we've delivered um, education sessions to uh, the two schools uh, mentioned there, Comedy uh, de Cairo and Pentragrig. Um, Perhaps more significantly, we've been involved with um, Swansea University, the um, teacher education department regarding um, reducing archival resource packs for teachers. And in that, that we're collaborating with Richard Burton Archives and the South Wales Miners Library. Um, so um, that's one very positive thing for the future that um, in, in a world where schools are less inclined to come to the archives, go out on school visits, and also um, we have limitations on our ability to go on site as, as well, uh, simply because of, of staff um, staff requirements. Um, uh, having resource, easy access resource packs are quite useful and working together because, of course, those archive collections um, uh, do have a lot of interplay and uh, synergy between them. Um, we've continued to deliver a, a session for Glamorgan Family History Society during the quarter, and also um, we've uh, Andrew spoken to the Neath Patalba Heritage Forum during the quarter about the newly opened Wales Broadcast Archive, which uh, was launched on 15th of January, and I'm very pleased a number of members attended that. Councillor Smith. Yeah. People come in there um, in one on the resource packs. You know, this looks very interesting. And I'd welcome an opportunity to have a look if the committee could have a look at some of the materials that's produced eventually. Yes. Uh, when, when there's something being produced. I go I know I'm like Methuselah, but you know I go back to the 70s and the 80s and some of the rest the material that was provided by the by the archives in those days, supported by country history advisors or whatever, you know, that they, they really did generate interest and I suppose you use a lot of them and put back uh, to my day now. And I think that this is gonna be an important uh, step forward. So with the new curriculum, I think yes. there's an opportunity there. Yes. To build our own materials and I think that's very well done. Yes, thank you. Well, that's noted, isn't it? Yes, yes. yes. Thank you for that suggestion, yes. um, The Wales uh, Broadcast Archive uh, was launched on the 15th of January. Uh, very successful launch, I thought. 
um, the clip corner will uh, also be moving to a stove, but it will be in the Southwest Miners Library um, accommodation there. So there isn't space in our new search room to accommodate the clip corner. However, there will be one in Swansea and of hoping that um, it will be um, quite um, heavily used when it's in city centre site. Um, I think of, at the moment, uh, probably it, it's reasonable to say that Swansea Civic Centre suffers slightly from feeling a little bit like a ghost building in that there's so little activity in there and it hasn't hasn't proved as um, as busy as we thought it might be. Um, we do obviously, and indeed the National Library of Wales needs to uh, um, um, uh, advertise it more more widely, but um, um, I think such such a facility would benefit very much from being city centre drop in thing because I think very often it's uh, if 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 you fancy watching an old television program and you know it's there and um, you're very likely to uh, just want to uh, on a whim want to go and. Uh, is it? It's not to say that it's not also quite a, an important research facility, and there are um, staff and students at Swansea University that are very interested in academic research in um, uh, uh, some of the uh, themes that uh, can come out from researching old television programmes. So, um, but also there's there's also a, very much a leisure use for this uh, thing. So. Um, I've seen a very similar facility in Manchester Library, um, Manchester Central Library, which is very much a drop in sort of lounge um, uh, uh, approach to to watching things. So you can come in and sit on a comfortable, comfortable sofa and watch watch old television programs, and it, it's very popular that way. And that's that's what I've always thought would be the um, best approach for for the uh, the clip corner that it's it's for leisure use and it also the sort of recreating the family around the set type thing mm -hmm. and uh yeah so we wait to see developments but i think it's important to be in there i'm really proud we were the second clip corner to open uh, after carmarthen uh the, there's one in carmarthen library um so um you know, we, we're up there. It just won't be um, on our, in the archive search room when we move to to a store. So we we need to make best use of it over the next next year, really. I think. Well, it sounds a wonderful facility, Ken, and um, and I'm sure once it starts to get uh, better known as to what um, it it entails, mm -hmm. it will become extremely popular. But I think you're right. In the civic centre, it doesn't perhaps quite attract that throughput of traffic where it's it's going to um, sort of generate interest or what's this all about? Let's go and have a look and yeah. then. But um, there's no doubt the quality of television in the past, the programmes, uh, we all have very fond memories mm -hmm. of our own particular uh, genre yes. uh, in <laughs> whatever, whether it's comedy, yes. drama or whatever. And we see them, some of them on, on the television and we do see you know, the quality. And, and I think people are very nostalgic about yeah. things like that as well. So yeah. in due course, what what are we doing to promote it and advertise it? Well, we're using social media yeah. Yeah. as as uh, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah, as we, we usually yeah. do. I think the National Library also needs to, to get in there and promote uh, the uh, facilities but the thing, thing at the moment is there are only two one in Swansea mm -hmm. and one in Carmarthen and yes. uh, uh, actually no, there's uh, Conwy as well and um, so in South Wales there's only the two yeah. uh, uh, one of the big things that will uh, perhaps change the, the dynamics of it is that there's due to be one opening in the Wales Millennium Centre and that's going to be um, they're going to get um, much more uh, students and, and photography students, film students involved and do arts um, uh, commission artists and, and, and so on. So they create video works and, and other things. So I think that will bring it to a much wider audience and raise the profile, perhaps even more so than having the facility in Aberystwyth at the National Library. 
Um, I think the Wales Millennium Centre is probably uh, you know, a, a iconic and a very high profile building. And I think having having that open will will raise the whole profile because I think a, probably the majority of population of probably fair to say don't realise that this TV archive mm. exists. Yeah, so um, but I've I, th I, I, I think it's probably a slow slow burn, as it were. It's uh, something that will will come to be more popular in, in due course. Yeah, and of course we must remember it's early days, yes, and yeah. and the weather starts the year. The weather hasn't been too good yeah. with people coming out, so so that's yeah. perhaps another feature. But yeah. I, I'm sh I'm sure it will gather momentum yes. as the months go by. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I was very pleased to to go to the north. So Robert, we were there. We we it was, it was fantastic, and uh, they typed in for me my diploma, and all of a sudden a, a, a piece came up about a a Spitfire that had uh, gone down uh, at the end of the war, and uh, uh, and uh, how they retrieved the Spitfire in 1975. I've since following on from that. I found out that this it went down in just the uh, place called Providence Lane. There's no plaque there, and we are now organising a plaque oh, to actually go up there. So that sort of came from that, oh, and I've sort of shared that stuff on social media as well because I think it'll be hugely uh, important from an historical point yes. of view as well. Because yes. simply by typing that place name in, I've got all that information where we wouldn't have got anything at all, mm -hmm. and it was totally news to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's it really interesting, really. Yes. And uh, so we can do something with that now as well. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, moving on to section four. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how, how many members use the um, archives, uh, but the um, Archive Service catalogue uh, crashed in September, uh, sorry, October, um, that kind of thing. And um, we, although we've been working um, around the problem by uh, providing access to an aggregated catalogue called the Archives Hub since then, um, uh, we are working with our um, Swansea Council Digital Services um, Department to uh, try to find a solution to this but I have to say that since I um, uh, raised the matter more recently um, uh, things are beginning to move but it, it is has been very slow it has been very frustrating in a world where um, uh, obviously our user figures are are down you know overall down since the pandemic we need everything everything we we can do to um uh to to bring people in and not having our online catalog working is um um a significant um uh issue for for us uh, somewhat similar to the issue we had with broadband at the Neath mechanics institute <laughs> that sort of dogged us for ages and thankfully um that was um was sorted but um yes it's it's been a somewhat fr frustrating thing but i'm pleased that movement is taking place on that well uh, that, that's good because it's quite some time isn't it from october we're talking of like five months aren't we yes indeed um, so what exactly was the software problem because um if they if, if we knew it was um andrew's going to race all right time. yes andrew <laughs> thank you um yes um, the software problem is basically that the version of the software that runs the online catalogue is out, uh, out of date. Um, and you'd think it'd be fairly straightforward to upgrade it, but for various reasons, both the IT department and the providers um, are uh, raising objections and problems um, that are meaning it's taking a very long time. Um, I had a meeting with uh, with um, representatives of our IT department and of Axial, who are the company that provide the software, yesterday. And um, Axial are going to do the installation work, um, but there is a 15-week queuing on that. So 
we're not going to get it sorted um, anytime particularly soon. I would stress, though, that this doesn't mean that the, the catalogues are not available. They are available. Um, there was a project with a thing called the Archives Hub, which is a sort of collaborative um, catalog. Um, uh, we, we did the work in 2017. All of our catalogues are routinely put on that. So everything is searchable there. And as it says in, in, the, um, in, in the agenda item, um, uh, our website's been changed to direct users to that. Um, so it, it's not as good from the point of view that you're, you're having to search and then filter it to find our results amongst all the results from other record offices. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're invisible. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't search our holdings. It's the best we can do for now. And we're looking at other options um, to see if there are other providers that would um, do it better than Axial are. We seem to have lost our connection to the room by the look of it. Just looks like that, doesn't it? You need to get your, so your software upgraded in, in Potomac, Pen. Get these cameras sorted out. It's just that it doesn't like talking to Swansea. That's the problem, Peter. Well, you know, it could be worse for trying to talk to Cardiff. Fair point. Okay. They know we've lost the connection. I would assume so. It must be obvious mm. from <clears throat> from their end. Mm. Oh, it looks like they're rebooting. That's Gareth back. Right, apologies everyone. I would, what, the Wi-Fi in the Civic Centre has dropped out. So can you hear us okay? We can hear you now, yeah. Excellent. There we are. I was hopefully was streaming off my phone now, so we should oh, be okay God, to, really? con to continue, yes. So let me, sorry, we probably need to start recording again. No, we don't? Okay. okay. Apologies for that. <laughs> and Andrew, you were cut off um midstream you were explaining about the software updates would you like to continue <laughs> with that <laughs> okay i'm not quite sure what, what point uh you, you lost me but um yeah i was just explaining that um the uh the software um it, it's about it, it's it's a version thing so we need to upgrade the software we've got on there it's more complicated than it would sound um uh from, from that um when it when, when you actually look at it and RIT has said they're not happy about um, taking it on on their own. So they want to work in collaboration with Axial, who are the, um, the company that produced the software. And Axial will be um, installing it. Um, but there is a, a significant delay to actually actioning that. Um, there's a 15 week queuing period, so um, we won't get that sorted anytime soon. However, I would like to stress that um, it's not as though we're completely without an online catalogue. Um, some years ago in 2017, we undertook a project to upload all of our catalogues onto a thing called the Archives Hub, which is a collaborative venture um, between a number of different record offices. Um, and we've maintained that, so um, all of our catalogues are still searchable on that. 
and we've updated our website to indicate what people should do to get to get hold of that. Um, so yeah, it, it should be stressed that we're not. We, we tend to go for a belt and braces job if we can, just to make sure that everything keeps running. Thank you, Andrew. That's very informative. Thank you. OK, so we'll move on to um, digital preservation, which is section five of the report. Um, so I did start to uh, go onto this territory in the uh, uh, talking about the budget, but uh, where I, I said that money has been set aside. So um, at the um, uh, prompting, probably not the right word, but uh, uh, mediated or uh, by Welsh Government, um, uh, a number of archive services across Wales have combined to create a consortium to create a trusted digital repository for digital preservation of their archive material. Um, and this I, I've talked about digital preservation um, on several occasions in several meetings about how, as we're all aware, the world is moving to digital records, large numbers of records don't ever see paper uh, nowadays, whether this is uh, photographs, um, council minutes from East Talbot, I'm not sure that they ever get printed out, um, uh, but also large numbers of um, uh, other business and um, organisation records. And to be, to be able to store and be absolutely sure that they will be readable in decades to come. We need to set up a digital repository. And this is something that archives across the UK and across the world, in fact, are uh, currently engaged in. Um, we're quite late to the table, but um, we are uh, approaching the table. And um, the uh, I'm pleased to say that eight archives um, across Wales are combining in the first instance to form this consortium and indeed three of them are in Swansea so it's ourselves and the two universities in Swansea, Swansea University and University of Wales Trinity St David. So um, the uh, important thing is that we actually, we actually take part at the very early stage and I'm very pleased to say that um, Welsh Government are going to pay the first year's subscription to the um, um, thing. well <laughs> uh, I'll say that subject to a suitable um, application uh, being uh, launched <laughs> there is provision <laughs> for the possibility that a grant may be awarded I think that, that's probably I correct myself here however um, uh, we confidently hope that we will be able to put in a, a viable um, uh, application and that it will be favourably locked on. But um, this has been subject to some delay, so it will uh, probably have a, a, um, a, a digital repository up and running from July onwards. So it will be after my time, unfortunately. But one of the um, Things that I put in the report, if I'm just turning the page on page six there, um, there is some discussion amongst the two universities and uh, ourselves about how we might get extra resource to actually start putting material into the um, uh, uh, into the dig digital repository. And once again, very much subject to a uh, Six, um, suitable application for external funding. We uh, there's a there is the potential for um, uh, the majority of the cost of that post to be funded by uh, external source. Um, however, it might uh, require something in the region of round about five k to in match funding. Um, I'm hoping I can keep it down that low. Um, uh, and as members will be aware, um, you control the reserves. So my um, uh, request here is 
should should we be talking that ballpark figure? Would members be would it be acceptable to members to commit that, that sort of figure, probably in the region of five to ten k from from the archive training reserve, um, with a view to um, having an extra um, trainee um, who work on the the digital um, repository. Members' views on um, Cambridge Robin. Recommendation. Yeah, supportive. Yeah. yeah. There, there are a lot of caveats around that, yeah. and it may not happen. But on the other hand, uh, I think having that mission would be yeah. probably a, a necessary starting point, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, um, members of the committee online, are, are you supportive of Kim's recommendation? Thank you. I, yeah. I think I think the committee recognises that. This digital preservation is an extremely important facility. In fact, it's a must have as we go forward. It's going to be the majority of records is going to be digital. So and this sounds a, a good for, for five thousand yeah. um, pounds. OK, so it's the principle of it, but having that extra resource in terms of somebody uh, of a person to actually do this yeah. is, is going to be really valuable. So. Thank you. Yeah. This may come to nothing, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good to uh, you know. I, I'm very pleased that we are there in the consortium with the Morgan Archives in Cardiff, Gwent Archives in Evervale, uh, North East Wales Archives. The, the, the major services in Wales are in the consortium. It's the smaller ones, the Angleses and the Caribbeans mm -hmm. that haven't been able to find the resource. Uh, I, as I outlined when I went through the budget, I have um, um, redirected resource to make this happen because there was going to be no extra money. I knew that from the very start. However, it's it's my view, and I'm so pleased you can't concur with me. That this is something we can't afford to ignore. Uh, and certainly, um, when we reapply for accreditation, when we've moved into a store, that the work that we're doing with digital preservation will be a key part of that application. So. Um, now, if we if we said we were, were not able to take in digital material, I think that would probably um, produce a high risk to our chance of going back to full accreditation. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. Which uh, on the subject of reserves, uh, so we would like to uh, appoint a, another trainee in the coming year. So that is. To, to members to approve as well. And, and as I mentioned in the budget report, that would be the full cost recovery of 32.5K. Yeah. Are members, members agreeing on to that? Yes. Yeah. So um, moving on to uh, staff, um, actually, I'm going to jump six because that's my <laughs> kind of, I've talked about myself there. I'll go on to professional meetings and training so we've undertaken um the training as outlined in the report and uh and taken part in the um uh professional meetings as outlined in section seven um and and section eight is the fees and charges from april 2024 so I've held the charges um uh as they were last year, because there's quite a significant increase last year. And uh, so I've held them. The only uh, difference is the price of a printout from PC, which is going up from 25p to 30p. And that's mirroring a change that Swansea libraries are making. Um, so um, trying to parallel li libraries, especially when we are in Ostova, we don't really want our charges to be any different from the central library charges otherwise re readers will come wise to that and then they'll just come through to get cheaper copies from from the archives yeah, i think i better declare an interest in this take that in the previous discussion okay in fact that we should leave the meeting with the site ah cool great yes okay yes Councillor Robert Smith is leaving the meeting. Yes, the for the ah, right. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, 
the reason this has come uh, forward is that for internal audit reasons, um, um, we are required, the committee is required to approve that. There's something I've only learnt over the years that the audit, audit committee, um, sorry, the well, internal audit section uh, requires us to approve the fees and charges on an annual basis. And we got pulled up one year when we um, we hadn't done so. So um, although it's an internal officer thing, um, uh, I, yeah, I would be grateful if the um, the committee would approve the table of fees and charges. Did the committee approve? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll yeah. just recall Councillor Smith. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, just moving on to section nine, the um, archive uh, collect, um, uh, archives were um, received during the, uh, uh, the last quarter as detailed in Appendix 2. Um, if anybody wants to make any uh, comments or questions either on Section seven or section nine of the report. I welcome any questions if there if there are, are any. Any questions or observations? Once again, a very eclectic um, range <laughs> of <laughs> items coming into yes. our three at time, yes. which is which is great to see. Yes. So great. Moving finally back to section six, uh, which is relates to staff. Uh, first, um, I'd just like to pay tribute to Katie Millian, archivist, who left uh, left us in January uh, in order to move to Command the Shirt Archive Service and set up a school service there. Uh, Katie had been with the archives for continuously for 16 years, but her um, so uh, service with the um, authority gone back further because she was a trainee much before that and had done other things. Um, but um, uh, she uh, single-handedly, I think it's fair to say, set up our school service and worked tirelessly with primary schools in particular to um, um, to get children um, involved with archives, uh, both on site and by going out to the schools as well. And um, that really gave us a huge, huge boost. And um, you know, she obviously uh, enjoys working with children and, and that uh, link between um, uh, archives and education. And, and that's what she's she's gone on to do with Command and Share. Um, and uh, which those of you who are familiar with, with that, that is reopened relatively recently and it's building its its service as a result. So, you know, um, their gain is our loss, really. I think it's fair to say. Um, we have been permission, given permission to advertise the post and the post will um, hopefully be filled shortly. So we at the uh, uh, interview stage uh, for uh, her replacement. Um, but I do think, it, so. I, I was just going to say, I think on, on behalf of the committee, would you please convey our thanks and gratitude to Casey for all the work that she's done over 16 years. Mm. I'm sure she's made an immense contribution to the education service, perhaps she was at uh, West, put West Glamorgan at the vanguard of this kind of uh, education provision in Wales. And I think we must be very proud of our achievements. And it's also, of course, with the new curriculum, with Kinefin, um, you know, schools are already in a very good place to, um, to associate the archives within their cu uh, yeah. curriculum yeah. as well. So I think, um, please do, she's extremely valued and valuable member of staff, a very competent 
member of staff too and we will greatly miss her and uh, it is unfortunate that people do move on to to other things mm. which is great for her it's probably a, a promotion perhaps mm. I don't know but uh, there comes a time when everybody moves on and, and it's obviously time for her but please do convey our thanks to her for the all the work that she's done and uh, and the impact that she's made on the service as well which is okay. incalculable okay. thank you thanks and moving on to myself uh, as members are absolutely i'm sure aware this is my last meeting so i retire in june at my 66th birthday um uh, as i say in the thing i'd like to take uh, this opportunity to thank you all for your encouragement and support I've seen, uh, I think it must be three, three <laughs> yes. <laughs> and however many members, I uh, haven't yes. begun to count how many members over 20 years as County Arquist. Um, it's my 79th and last meeting, so didn't quite make it to the 80. Uh, but um, uh, I would just like to say a few words of wisdom uh, and how I would think the I'd like to see this committee steering the archive service forward. Um, just uh, uh, a couple of points that um, that I've always tenets that I've always held to, and uh, I think one of the uh, one of the key things that I've um, uh, over the years I've always um, held to is that it's not just local history that we're um, uh, involved with. Um, this area uh, is has both national and international importance. And although people might say, well, it's just local history and it's only of local interest, um, West Morgan has played a huge part in uh, the development of, of the nation and of Wales and of the UK and indeed right across the world. And so the uh, our collections are not just of local interest and to um, just to evidence that I will say uh, talk about Anita Abbey Arworks collection which uh, in 2014 I was really proud that we obtained UNESCO recognition of its importance and and we're pleased it's a Neith Talbot collection as well especially as we're in the Neith Talbot so um, you know our collections are not just local they are uh, they are nationally important and we should never forget that. Uh, which kind of leads me on to my second piece of wisdom, I think, really, is that um, we are a, a small cog in a big wheel of national uh, um, um, local archives, which together make a national network and that collaboration is absolutely key to our moving forward. I've always regarded collaboration and um, uh, working together as the way that we work forward. And you'll see that in the report with regard to digital preservation. Now, we couldn't do that on our own. It will cost us twice as much. Um, you know, Cardiff Council's doing at the moment. It's costing them twice as much to do it on their own as it would be in the consortium. Um, but We've worked, uh, or I've worked, with so many projects over the uh, over the years. And I'm just going to mention a couple: the Tithe Maps of Wales, working together with the National Library, they're now online. Um, we could only do that if we worked uh, collaboratively. We got half a million pounds of um, HLF money uh, for that, uh, which. At the time, I was the chair of Archives and Records Council Wales, so I was heavily involved in the HLF bid. Um, and also working collaboratively with our other archives in the area as well. And one of the things um, uh, I will say about Astorfa is that it will be great to have the South Wales Miners Library on the premises and working closely with them. But Moving forward, we also need to work more closely with um, Rich Person Archives, um, with UWTSD, and with all the other archive providers or um, facilities that exist in the in the local area. And um, it's absolutely 
uh, there is absolutely no point in our um, not collaborating or not or, or competing with other uh, agencies um, in, in with regard to our collaboration because the public only want uh, want the the item in themselves. They're not really interested as to whether two institutions are fighting amongst themselves for um, uh, to obtain a collection. The, the public just want access to history and they want uh, qualified, skilled staff and knowledgeable and communicative staff. So it, it, we can only do that, do that in the context of working together and working in a uh, professional network, maintaining those those skills and, and the skilled workforce. So um, I do hope that going forward, Westmore and Archive Service will still continue to play a part in Wales and on um, uh, on the UK scene as well, which kind of reminds me about the other thing that I was going to mention. He said reaching in, into his pocket. <laughs> uh, there is a reason. Um, uh, I had to uh, show this to the members in the screen. I'm not quite sure how to show it on screen, but uh, this is the the archives card. So this uh, uh, this ticket gives you uh, access to around about 70 archives across England and Wales, and um, it started uh, here, it started in my brain to some extent, <laughs> but, but it started in Swansea because um, we um, um, pioneered a, a, a card called Archives Wales amongst um, uh, the, um, the Welsh archives, supported with a lot of support from Welsh government as well. And this merged when uh, the uh, the Archives and Records Association is looking for a replacement for its uh, CARN ticket, the County Archives Research Network ticket. I was able to at the um, ARA conference in Manchester back in 2015 to go up to give a, um, uh, a session on the importance of reader tickets, which led to a working group, which led to this card. I do hope it continues uh, through the years. It's sponsored by Ancestry. But you can use this one ticket in virtually every uh, Welsh archive and um, in most of the major um, archives in, um, uh, uh, in England, all the big county record offices. So essentially, it's a huge boon for researchers working with archives across, uh, uh, across England and Wales. And I do hope moving forward that we'll encourage archives in Scotland and Ireland to join because Ira does actually cover the whole of uh, Great Britain and Ireland as well but uh, and that's for the future but I'm really pleased that um, uh, we've we've got this resource and it's I, I also along with my all my other duties data protection and uh, records management and, and uh, archives I also sit on the archives card help desk and I can tell you that <laughs> virtually every day somebody uh, emails to help desk saying uh, I can't load my photograph or uh, um, how uh, I haven't visited an archive to finish my registration and what do I do and so on and so uh, it's 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 a very busy uh, busy help desk and one of the things I'll probably miss as well actually is uh, uh, dealing with with those queries but I shall finish there just to say that it's been an enormous privilege and honor to be your archivist for just a couple couple of months shy of uh, 20 years and um, I do hope that I've um, done you proud in the process uh, certainly from my side it's been uh, very uh, challenging and uh, interesting and um, uh, certainly I I've enjoyed it enormously. Thank you Kim and we're very very proud of you. Before I say a few words on behalf of the whole of the committee I'm going to open it up because I'm sure some of you will want to say something to Kim. Thank you. Um, I'm not quite as long as you, but this is my seventh year on this committee. And I'd just like to thank you for every report you've given, which have always been very informative and very thorough. So I'd like to wish you a very long and a very happy retirement up in the Highlands of Scotland. Please take care up there. <laughs> I don't want to read about some mountain rest there, <laughs> but I'd like to thank you very much for all your reports over the last seven years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
echo the thanks and uh, we go back a long way, Kim. I think it's 20, it is 20 years. I think it is. And you, yes, uh, probably long time. <laughs> uh, I think you said that I was the only one who ever read the minutes of the Football of Industry Council. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and so I really want to put on record my thanks to you in terms of the work that I was able to do uh, because of the facility things over that 20 years, apart from membership of this committee then since 2012. So really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, can I? Yeah, obviously I've known you a mere coming up to seven years. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, your enthusiasm and uh, that you put into to the work has rubbed off on us all. And uh, the great job that you have done into get, uh, getting into the archive, into the into the place it is today, and not least the new building as well, and the pressures that you put on behind the scenes to make sure that that is going to be fit for purpose. So thank you, and have a, a good and a long retirement. Thank you. Just want to say thank you, Kim. I've only known you the least probably just two years, yeah. but when myself and Jeremy Hurley were shown around on the south meet then I can only compare you as Willy Wonka and his chocolate factory. <laughs> the the crumb jewels and showing us the chart of Margaret and Nithabi and you brought it to life. And I just want to say thank you for treasuring those things that we all need to treasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I speak on behalf of these antiquaries, and um, our long association. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your support. I know sometimes it hasn't been smooth road, but we've got there. Yes, indeed. So thank you very much for your support. Um, Thanks, you have a wonderful, happy retirement. Well, um, I just want to know we've done the work to do and for the shop a few years in town. But on behalf of myself and Chris Saunders, we just wish you to be with me. Thank you. And um, we can see how enthusiastic you are about your role, how much um, you enjoyed it, and that's where I've dropped it. So I think um, we need to be doing that very soon. Thank, Thank you, Jan. Louise. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Thanks very much. Um, and Kim, I think I've been on the committee for the whole time that you've been um, County Archivist. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of the university's perspective, I think under your leadership, you know, the partnership has really grown with the university um, and, you know, your your dedication and your work ethic has just been a constant source of inspiration to me the whole time uh, we've worked together. So I'll be very sad to see you go, but thank you for everything you've done. Thanks, Louise. Andrew. Yeah, this is one on behalf of the staff. Um, I've worked with Kim for quite a lot longer than most of you have had any association with him. Um, I first came to work here in 1995 and Kim has been my my line manager for, that, for the entirety of the time, nearly 30 years now that we've uh, we've known each other. Um, Kim's been in charge for 20 years and he's led the service into the 21st century and has led it with erudition, hard work and um, a level of commitment um, and it's been hard times at times with um, cuts, financial pressures, changes in the staffing structure and of course there were the good times when you know there was much more money available and um, we were uh, moving into our new search room here. He's left the place in a good place. He's um, the work he's put in with regard to the um, uh, moving into to a Storva, it it means that we we can have confidence as we move forward um, that the the um, the conditions are going to be as good as they possibly can, and that all the work has been put in to to ensure that that's uh, that's the case. We will miss you, Kim. Obviously, as staff, we will be saying that um, in another way and another time. Um, but uh, thank you for all your work that you've done. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, Andrew. Elias. Uh, thank you, Chair, and apologies. My camera seems to have given up this morning, but um, apologies for that. But I, I think just um, just as a cabinet member responsible for the archives in, in Swansea, I, I just would like to really reflect all the comments that have been made, and particularly the, particularly the comments around Estorva, making sure that 
you know, the hard work that's gone into ensuring that we have a really fit for purpose um, service there. And that, I think that's been very much appreciated by us. Um, and I, I certainly remember joining the Archives Committee as a, as a fairly new councillor. Um, and it's certainly been one of the most interesting committees that I've been part of. And that is, you know, particularly with the very comprehensive information reports that, that we always get from you, Kim, and that that's it was very helpful to understand the service, but also to to go out there um, to, you know, to the general public and, and sell a service and, and explain what it's about and what it's for. So I, I really hope that continues and to wish you all the very best uh, in your retirement. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Elias. Um, well, Kim, I think everybody's comments here just show how much um, affection and esteem people have for you, but how much respect also that they have for you for your time as the county archivist, and of course, as your time before that, because you were you were a member of staff, as Andrew said, for probably ten years prior to that. But I think it's it's very clear that the impact that you've made over this term. 20 years as head of archives has been immense. You know, we can get used to things, and I think we've got used to West Glamorgan archives being really uh, quite a jewel in the crown in the world of archives. And I think much of that is down to you. If, if not all, of course, it's a team effort with the staff, and I know you've always appreciated the team around you. But um, what I greatly admire in you is your passion, your vision, your absolute dedication and your um, total commitment to archives and, and what an archives service means, because it is more than just a collection of artefacts. It is about the past, it's about the present and it's about the future. And I think we've always seen that you've always been on the ball in thinking ahead. Uh, you told us about the card, which I wasn't aware of. Um, and you said about, uh, and, and that was you mm. having an idea and having a vision and and really carrying it through and bringing it in, into fruition. And you talked about West Glamorgan, uh, the contribution that is made, not just to the area, but to Wales, the UK and across the world. And I think you too have made a vast contribution to putting West Glamorgan archives on the map, not just in this area, but in Wales and in the UK and indeed across the world. We have much to be grateful to you for, um, but it is your, your passion, your vision and that total commitment uh, that we've seen right the way through. But also I think we all admire your, um, you've never been um, uh, uh, shied away from saying difficult things. And I think as a head of a service, I think that's really important and for a committee like this, which draws two local authorities together, I think that's always been very important too, but you've always done this in a balanced and fair way, but always made us as committee members feel that we are totally aware of things and, and up to speed with things. So I, I thank you, although I've perhaps one of the shortest that I've worked <laughs> with you because they've only been, well, four years, actually. <laughs> so that very, very short time. But of course, I, I, I knew you before. And just uh, thank you. It doesn't seem quite enough. But I think, you know, you, you get behind that. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. All our feelings yes. and uh, and all our appreciation of your 20 years and more of loyal service to the archive. So thank you so much. Wish you all the very best in your retirement. You've got lots to look forward to. Walking, I'm not sure if you like the whiskey as well, but perhaps a pot or two along the way. Um, you're, you're baking, making all those lovely cakes and, uh, yeah. and enjoying time with your friends. And you have deserved it. Enjoy it to the best of your ability. But you will never, ever be forgotten. And I think you will leave that legacy behind of a flourishing archive service, which has made such um, an immense impact. And, and that's down in, in, in great part to you. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you indeed. very much. Thank you. So if there's no more um, business, uh, I will draw the meeting to a conclusion. So thank you all very much for your attendance today.